All right, so we're gonna put this Canty Turbo Kit on 2015 Razor 1000 XP four seater. In order to do that, I wanna get those inner bed halves out and make some room to work on it. In order to get those out, the cage has to come off. In order to get the cage off, I gotta pull my doors off. This is what we got. Take the bed out, comes out in two pieces, left half, right half, get those out of the way. That'll open up this top part here, and then I'm going to pull this bottom panel as well. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is start by removing all the stock intake tubing. So we need to cut right around here in order to install the fuel return line. Now what I did, I chopped up an old license plate. I'm gonna use that and just slide it in under there and then cut that out. So here's the cutout piece and I lightly touched down on the license plate with my Dremel. The reason that I jammed the plate in there so that I didn't hit that hose. All right, so once you get the fuel pump assembly out, you have to pull this very carefully and take everything from here and put it on here. All right, so on this piece, I had to go through and bend the tabs up individually, a little bit on each one so that it comes off. And now I can take this piece slap it onto there. You may have to bend these tabs back down just a hair in order to get it to seat on the fuel stopper. Alright, once back in you've got it seated all the way. You can go ahead and put this piece back in. Press in, make sure it clips in completely. With all that out of the way, we can go ahead and drill the top of the tank with a Q size drill bit. The closest fractional size is a 2164 I believe which might be a hair smaller but I think it works and then a quarter inch NPT tap. You only run the tap about halfway in because of the taper on the tap that way you don't widen the hole too much. The tighter you leave that the better off you're gonna be when you thread this in. So we're gonna install the turbo manifold exhaust manifold, whatever you want to call it. And we've got this gasket here. It's rather thick. So you're going to use the supplied hardware, not the stock ones. The stock ones would be too short. And we're going to go ahead and use a washer on there. Now I think you could use a lock washer or a flat washer. I'm going to go with the lock washer. And then in between, so on this surface, this surface, and this surface against the head we're going to go ahead and put the highest temperature gasket sealer we can find just a little bit of it to kind of fill the gaps in there this copper is good for 700 it says it's the highest temp that I can find it'll look just like this we're going to slap this on the manifold and do the other side also once you get the turbo manifold on you can go ahead and get the turbo mounted up. You may need to reclock some stuff. You might want to angle the turbo this way. Probably going to want to reclock this way. So I'm pretty much going to try to get everything mounted up that gets mounted to the turbo, and then we'll go ahead and clock where we're going to want everything. All right, well, you've still got room to play. You're going to put the flange for the oil return line on the bottom of the turbo. That's going to thread onto here. Now the other end of it, will come right into the side down there. We'll pull this 8mm plug here, the turn line will go in right there. The turbo I got is water cooled, so it's going to have coolant running through it as well. So on your stock coolant hoses here, I made a cut about right here. We're going to take, we've got two of these guys, this one, basically is going to go up in there. 
and onto the banjo of the turbo, like that. And then the backside one is gonna come down and into this one. And then, before I actually go together with it, it's all gonna get covered with this. This is what your coolant lines going to the turbo should look like when you're done. Now on the oil feed line for the turbo, if it's a ball bearing turbo, like mine is, then you need to run this oil restrictor as your adapter on the oil feed line. You'll be pulling this 3H drive plug and replacing it with this to mate up to your oil feed line. And right into the top of the turbo using that oil orifice. On the throttle bodies, you've got to get them removed, get everything pulled off. When you get ready to go back together, this is how you're going to look. You're going to bolt this piece under the head first, and then you're going to be putting the O-rings in all the way around. These two long bolts in the pack here are going to run through the two plugs on the side of here, one on top, one on bottom here, and they're going to sandwich the throttle body assembly all the way across. When you're all said and done and you've got everything together you should have had the two short bolts on both sides, the two longer ones in the center down there and then the two really long ones through these access holes sandwiching your throttle body assembly and tying in down here. Go ahead and connect the fuel return line right here can route it underneath. We're going to run it right along the fuel feed line. If you follow the line, you can go all the way back to the tank with it. And then right here, we've got a fuel T in line. We're going to put the fuel pressure gauge. And then somewhere downstream, down underneath the turbo, it'll mount to a motor mount bracket is going to be the fuel pressure regulator. Once the fuel pressure regulator is installed, you'll see you got the fuel line from the fuel rail coming into the side of it. Comes out the bottom. Ignore my extra heat protector. Probably unnecessary, but I did it anyways. All the way up and into where we put that tap for the return line into the top of the tank. If we start putting the downpipe on, or the exhaust, start working on putting a wastegate on. In my application, running directly off the wastegate spring for boost, I'm going to take the bottom port, run that to my boost source at the turbo, and the top port is going to be a vent. We've got two taps back here. One of them is going to go to the boost gauge. The other one is going to go right there onto the fuel pressure regulator. When you're ready to go on with the intercooler, you mount this bracket here. And then there's two rubberized tube clamps that are going to mount up here as hangers. Once you've got your intercooler fully mounted, you can go ahead and run the two inch up to two and a half. This piece, the coupler, into the intercooler. The other side of your intercooler, 190, that piece of pipe, and another coupler. When you get to wiring the fans, you basically need to connect it to any accessory power so most people, I think, take it around and come back and just tie into the tail lights. I've already got some old wires here that are already made it up to the fuse box and everything. There used to be my old whip light wires, so I'm going to go ahead and just hook the fans up to those. And there you have it. It's not the prettiest job in the world, but it'll do. When you go in with the heat shield here, it attaches on one bolt down here on your sway bar mount.
there's three holes on top of here to attach to that bar. And there's two holes here to attach up to there. Now we're getting ready to cut our hole out to provide air access to the intercooler. I just put two screws in, mount it here. I'm going to trace out the inside, pull the bed halves back off, and cut them out, and then put the mesh screen in. So after using the Dremel to cut them out, we're just taking some sandpaper, cleaning up the edges to get rid of all the fuzzies, and we're going back together. When it's all said and done, you'll have the air filter down through. Just like that. You'll need to adjust the base fuel pressure between 38 to 40 PSI with the razor running and at idle. You do this by adjusting the fuel pressure regulator. If you can't get the fuel pressure that high, you'll need to remove the lock nut on the fuel pressure regulator, put some blue Loctite on the adjuster, and make the adjustment while the Loctite is wet. This will allow you to take the adjuster in further than you would normally be able to. I'm not showing 100% of everything in this video. This video is just to show the important parts. You also need to install the wideband, your boost gauge, power commander, auto-tune, anything you're using for management. You also have to install the clutch kit and tune the clutches. There are plenty of good resources online for all of this. Thanks for watching.